been given a get? Do they have any kind of obligations, continuing obligations to each other? Similarly, Klai Yisrael has been rejected by a Kodesh Baruch Hu, sent into Golos, Gerushin, no longer in the house of the Orden, no longer in Eretz Yisrael. In fact, that's Reb Tzodik points out that the finding of the sugis of the Churban in the Gimon Gitten was, of course, with intent to symbolize this sense of distance of being sent away. Also in the Perak of Nizok and Sazur Tzolik. And Rabbi Yeshua answers that the Cholzai, he quotes the Posset from Yeshayahu, even after his. After Kozos, Od Yodai Nutuya, the Rebbeinishon's hand is still outstretched over us. Od Yodai Nutuya. The Marshal asks, this is, this is a posik of Poronius. This is a posik which is extending the It's an extension of the suffering, not an amelioration of it. So how, how is this an answer to the tzeduki? So asks the Marshal. The Yerushalmi says that the, is done on the question of the Vim, Vim Rishonim, ending on a positive note. So Tmima brings the Yerushalmi, Metzino, the Vim Rishonim, Shoyo Chesmin, as the Vim, the Divri Nachomis. Gemara asks for Xiv, Gemara's Mas Tano, Kutsafto, Leno Admai. Moshe brings that that's why we, in fact, end, we re repeat the earlier posuk, Ashiveno Hashem Elecha ben Ashuva Chadei Shemeinu Kikedem. Torah Tumimah asks, the Bala Torah Tumimah asks on the Pnei Moshe, that it's not really a Teretz because that's not the Dion the discussion of the Yerushalmi is how did the Nevi'im end? This decision to innovate, bringing back the earlier Posik and ending with that is <coughs> Talmudic, Turbinic. How does that settle the question of the Nevi'im Rishayna? Ben Yaina is quoted as having said that there's more smas tonu, there's, there's a disgust, that's rejection. That's one state of, of being distanced as a consequence, a function of a state of disgust. There's another kotsafta, anger. If the Mos Mastano, if the disgust came as a result of anger, it's not Be'etzim, it's not essential. Then the anger can pass, and it means that it's, it's temporary. So that in itself is a kind of reduction 
of the of the suffering, of the Polonius. And then implied in that is a kind of Hadesh Menu Kikedem, that this is this is waiting in the wings. It's going to happen. Medrash in Echarabba says that Kalyasal, because of the lack of Mirov Oni, the seeming interpretation is that they didn't, they didn't identify, sympathize, and act upon the Aniyam that were there. But the Medrash says, that only is a reference to lechem only. It's a reference to, to matzah. That they ate chametz. They didn't eat matzah, they ate chametz. We have different approaches. Why dafka that of the mitzvahs that they were not doing and the averas that they were doing, then how come this is chosen as being so primary? Why would this be so pivotal as to be a game changer, a life changer, more than other mitzvahs. We're talking about we're talking about a time where they they were even on shloisha veiras chamuris. So why would this be singled out? Read in the Kriya today that Klayasol come to Eretz Yisrael, they're they get chucked out as per the Mo'oz Ma'asta, Kotzafta. They go to Chutzlots and they begin again to serve idolatry in Chutzlots. And then for no reason that's explained in the Psukim, we're going to search for the Rebbe Nishan, and they'll find them. Discussion amongst the Mephoshim that the posse begins in Loshen Rabbim, Bikashtem, ends in Loshen Yochid. Some that say that many are going to search will be kashtem. Only Yechidim will find. And what's also. There are some that say that the beginning of a person's odyssey, the catalyst to get him to search, can be for a myriad different reasons. Everybody's biography and the uniqueness of his situation. But when they find the emes, umatsosa, they come together. There's a oneness. They're on the same page. What got them there? Hosts of different reasons. But when they're there, they're sharing an emes. That's not to say, that's not the equivalent of saying everybody then behaves in the same manner. Because Taylor's not monolithic. There's a range of areas of emphasis, of excellence, of Aveda. But everybody's putting on tefillin, and everybody's wearing tzitzis. But there can be a balagoda and a balhalocha. There can be somebody whose emphasis is in one area more than another area. There's a zvulin, there's a yasocha. Those options exist, but everybody's on the same page because everybody is agreeing that that is who and how. This particular neshama can actualize itself. There are some safer daushans on the posik. Mishle gam eile, Mishle shleim ha-melech she-atiku an she-chizki ha-bi-yehuda. 
These are also the parables of Shlomo, which the people of Chizkia copied. So I'm saying ask two questions. One, a factual question. Two, a textual question. The factual question. In the time of Chizkia El Tisal, the Novi Yeshayo says, was Shom Evashayat, desolate, untended, left, overcome with weeds. But from Don to Be'er Sheva, everybody was Boki and Hilchas Tumah and Taira and Noshim Noshim Betaf. Which Agav, there's a medrash that says that about the time of David and Melech as well. But leave that Shaila aside. Esther Sam Sefer, Shlema Melech built palaces, planted orchards. His was a Hanhog of Teferis, of glory, grandeur, magnificence. That the Malchus Diara, the Malchus here, should reflect as close as possible the aesthetics and the majesty of Malchus Shomayim Adshi Yodoi Mogaz. So how can there be a comparison between the Hanhoga of Chizkiah and the Hanhoga of Shleim HaMelech? Gam Eile seems to be a comparison of two approaches as well. That's the factual question. The textual question is the, the Misholem that they, how could you say they copied it if it was in fact a different approach that their theses, their ideas, their conceptions couldn't have been the same that to learn the verses in the same way. They couldn't have just adopted and adapted it in a, in a simplistic fashion. Says the Chsam Sefer that Shleim HaMelech came after Dovid. Somebody that comes after Dovid HaMelech can afford the luxury of a Hanhoga of Malchus, of Teferis. There is a Hanhoga like that. And perhaps it's a preference under ideal conditions. But Chizkiah came after Ochos. He had to rid El Yisrael from Avedah Zohar. And therefore, he went to an extreme that the whole country was one large kailu. Anoshim noshim v'tav. Says the Chsam Sefer, if Shlema would have been alive, Shlema Melech would have been alive in Chizkiah's time, he would have done what Chizkiah did. If Chizkiah would have been in Shlema's time, he would have done what he did. Each had to grapple, struggle, do battle with the challenges that face them. The world is in flux, and they need hachroh to make decisions on which hanhoga is most appropriate for which neshama and for any given neshama in which particular time and place, the context. Always oilam shonu benefesh place, the time, and the, the people. And so, Dovin Melech says, Gam ki eilich begates al movas, even in the shadow, the valley of the shadows of death, lo it's not fearful of evil. Kiyata imodi rebenishom is with him. Shiftecho meshantecho ahemi yenachamuni. Tarach lefonai shulchan 
לפני צהריים. I would think that perhaps we could find in this posik, the Tarach Lefon HaShulchan, a remez, the Rabbeinu Bachai, says there was a mini kodum in many kehilas in Eastern Europe that they took the shulchan that the Balabayas was mach neseirach, that he gave so much hospitality, and they dismantled that shulchan to make the oven the casket that would accompany him. So that his schusim of Agnos Esolchim would be malavahim. Gam ki elech begeitz al-mobas tanach lefon ha-shulchan. Neged tzavoroi. I submit that as a remez to the minig that the Rebbeinu Bechai brings. I'll call upon him. How do we say shiftecho u mishantecho? Mishantecho, your staff to lean on. I understand. Shiftecho, the staff with which we're punished. How can that, how can that yenachamuni be consolation? But famous marshal that's been given over the years of the father who doesn't discipline his son or what Yishlema Melech says in Mishle that the withholding of discipline is counterproductive. But discipline doesn't mean venting of spleen of a parent or a disciplinarian type teacher. That's his problem. What the child may or may not need in any given context, discipline is not dependent on the blood pressure of the expediter. That's his problem. But if a father takes no interest in his child, then he doesn't discipline him. So through history, shiftecho, mishantecho, the Rebbein Shalom, one time, we, we have what to lean on. Another time, we have the Yisurim. That means the Rebbein Shalom is still involved with us, engaged with us in history. Had Klai Yisrael not suffered the disasters that we suffered in history, would have been a kasha, because the psukim say that that is what is going to transpire when collectively we fail to keep Taylor. Chazal teach us that's what's going to happen. As we said, Gimon Gitten, Parach Nizokin, and elsewhere, Tainus, Chagiga, elsewhere. When Klai Yisrael fails, there's a reckoning. Had it not happened, it would have been a massive kasha, because that's what we were told was going to happen long before it happened. Now, the moment before it happens, my job, our job, is to be a defense attorney. To plead on behalf of Klal Yisrael. That's what the Rebbein Shalom wants of us. To emphasize the schusim, the collective merit. Moling mitzvahs kerimainem, even the, the kalim shebehem, the reikim shebehem. 
That's our job. Post facto, <coughs> I don't challenge Chas V'Shalom Da'ash Kocha, I recognize that that's what, that's what was intended. And it's a raya that owed Yoda in the Tuya, that he, the Rebbeinu Shalom is engaged, involved. It's not chas v'shalom, ofa lepumayo when our Stetilian deity that created the world and then went on social security. It's a god of history, a god that interacts with every yochid and klayasel collectively. The Inmezer points out, ubikashtem, that the Rebbeinu deals with his novi through the klal, bikashtem, the rabbim, umatsosa, and each individual. Speaks to the collective and to the yachid simultaneously. We've always understood that there are other ayahs to that idea that the genius of Nevi'im G'dayle Teira throughout the Deiras has been that when they speak to a tzibur, they see every yochid. In the Bekashtem, they see the Yomotzosa. And when they speak to the yochid, they see the tzibur that's going to come out of that yochid. Every yochid is a tzibur. Founding Rosh Yeshiva, Tervedas, Hyman, Satsal, old man pitched up in a snowstorm to give a shia to five boys, first yeshiva in America, wintry day, and he gave the shia as if he was talking to a hundred boys, and they asked him, Hayatochen, how did you take the risk to go in this slippery day, snowstorm? Five boys, you gave a shia, Ke'ilu, you were talking to a packed house in a major base medush in Nador, Pompadisa. He said, you saw five boys here. I saw the thousands that are coming out of them. I saw their talmidim, their children, their eneklach, their ruer eneklach. Ubikashtem umotsosa. Ponevich Arov cited a medrash that there are ten major famines the Rebbe Hashem sent to the world. Bezeas Apecha Teichalechem is considered a famine. Then by Avrom, later by Yitzhak, Rus, ten major famines. One of the famines is the famine recorded in Amos. To hear the word of the Rebbeinu Shlalem, that'll be the famine. Ask the Panovich Rav, how can you lump this together with the others? The others are positive. The others are negative. This is positive. This is a positive thing to want to hear the Dvar Hashem. Now, even though the Posik afterwards says, the Yeshotu Tuba always will lo yimtu. They'll drift in the land and they won't find. Nevertheless, the Yetzim hunger and thirst, and we'll come back to that. Why won't they find? Said the Panavich, you love anybody that's ever been exposed, lo aleno, to a famine, sees people rummaging through the trash, picking on rinds and peels and chewing on them as if they provide nourishment. That'll be the state of affairs in people will chew on the peels and rinds of spirituality as if it's providing nourishment. That's a curse. Okay, another shayla. How come over here it says, and how come we read in the Paoshel, Kisid 
think the answer is, is in the POSIC. The answer is, there's a t'nai. Umotsoso ki sidrashana bechol abovcha. There's be a shotatu, there's drifting. Rashi uses the term Vayashotu by the Mon. Rashi explains they went out, the Posik says, they went out to, they were coasting, cruising. Rashi says, Bli Oma, without any effort. Vayashotu means lacking effort, no investment. If that's what the Novi Amos uses, then he's talking about spiritual window shopping. He's talking about drifting without any kind of investment in taking a risk of where the emiss, where truth might take us. That's ki sidrishenu bechol avovachol at tnai, then it's umotsoso. Interestingly enough, it also says over there, we asked, uh, what happened? What changed? They were chucked out of Eretz Yisrael because of Eretz Yisrael. They went to Chutzlot. They're still being over to Eretz Yisrael. What happened? Where's the transition? Mishon Bigimatria. Mitzrayim. What was the state of affairs in Mitzrayim? They, they hadn't earned that privilege of the Gula. They held on barely to Jewish identity. Medrosh and Chazal teach us. Language, clothing, names, family purity. But they were over there by the Zara. And according to the Medrash and Eicha, they ate chomets. Why that Avera worse than others? Well, one, if that was the state of affairs in Mitzrayim, then it was Yisarusi, the Eli, the Yibanisham reached to us even though we hadn't earned that privilege. That's a fallback position since the Rebbe Sholem, as it were, has committed to the Ovois that Klai Yisrael was going to make it to be a Sagar, to the finish line in history. And therefore, the 49th Shah of Tumah before they got to the 50th, the Ben Shem extricated them. Of course, many of us have shared the idea that the Orachayim HaKadosh says that the reason they had to be extricated lest they fall into the 50th Shal is because they weren't yet B'nai Taylor. They didn't have Taylor. With Taylor, someone can fall or Lenu into the 50th Shal and get out. There was Chaim HaKodesh in Shmais, and there was Chaim HaKodesh again in Sefer Vayikroch of Beis, makes the point somebody can fall to a level that's not shayach to be lower than that, and get out through the Kayach of Teirah. That's the Kayach of Teirah. In the past, we've suggested that classical problem of predestination. Ben Shalom knows what I'm going to do before I do it. So, isn't that an incursion into my free will? A lot of approaches, but one basic approach in the Rishonim is that the Ben Shalom transcends time. No such thing. He's not limited, boxed in by the boundaries of time. He created time. Time is a creation of the Rebbeinah Shleilam. Therefore, he precedes any kind of 
quote unquote dating or chronology that we can conceive of. I would think that that's one of the reasons why the Medrash says, Ain Atta el Chuva. Atta with an ayin is Chuva. Because how can Chuva be possible? How can you undo the past? It was done. It's a fact of history. Right? We leave it to, to our cousins to do reconstructionist history and rewrite history. But we believe that what was done is a reality. How can you change it? The answer is the Rebbeinu had to be Machadish Tshuva. When Chazal report the cosmic dialogue took place, what is to be done with the sinner? So Taylor said, he has to pay the ultimate penalty. He's a, he rebelled against the Melech Malchi Lochem. Discussion. The Rebbeinu is Machadish Tshuva. Why? Because the Rebbeinu everything is Atta, everything is now. Past, future, present, it's Atta. And the Rebbeinu invites the Balchuva into the Dalit Amas of Atta, of Tshuva, of nowness. Now he can reconstruct and recreate the past. Ad kedekach, the tshuva me'ava, past failings become mindless, they become virtues. Tshuva me'ira, they're nullified. Tshuva me'ava, you're turning that energy inside out, and now it's a catapult for growth. And so, Mitzrayim, the Rebbe Nishon reached to us. When Klai Yisrael needs that proud, then we live through Mitzrayim, which in anticipated every other Golos. And if we need any feature and aspect of that Kayach, then it's Mishon. Will be Kashtam Misham, it'll be Mitzrayim Dik. The Rebbeinu Shlalem will reach to us when we are failing to be self energized. The other day, Rashi brings on Hail Beya Moshe, as a tale as this, Moshe Abenu explains the term Hail. Rashi says, Ubeya Shivim Loshin. The Ksava Kabbalah, we said, says it can't mean 70 different languages because what purpose would that be for? It must be that just Shivim Ponim Leteva. Perhaps the simple read of Rashi, which most do read it like that, not like the Ksavah Kabbalah, the simple read of Rashi is that since Klai Yisrael would be Mufuza amongst the Umas and they have to go on that Shlichas to be Maila, the Nitzaitzas of Kedusha, the Nishomas that have gotten lost, the Nitzaitzas of Kedusha that are there, as a result of Chet of Odomavishon, of the Shvira Saluchas, that might have happened through a different script. It could have happened that everybody would have come here, that all those filings of interest and curiosity would have been drawn by the magnet of our excellence in our spiritual performance. But if that isn't happening, and we fail to draw them here, then we have to go out and collect them. And just like when it reaches a point that it becomes precarious, 
out of Mitzrayim we were plucked. The Benisham plucks us out of each place. Mishon, Mitzrayim dik. But it's going to take now post Torah, post Shiras Haluchas, also retrieving the sparks of whatever virtues, achievements, accomplishments that Kaiso encounters in its journeys, in its odysseys. Janko Galinsky Zatzal used to tell the story that when he was in prison in Siberia, he was there with a, another Russian, a white Russian officer who had been anti-communist. And every once in a while, this officer used to disappear One day, Rabianko followed him, and he had his old uniform from when he was a general hidden someplace in the compound, and he had a broken mirror, and he used to don the uniform and look at himself in the mirror. He so said, to remind myself of who I am. That's who I am, Be'etzim. I would think that Klal Yisrael dispersed around the world, all these cultures, languages, so separate, so different. But then it says us of Kedusha. But the Rebbein Shon gives us even a handle in the overwhelming secularity of Am Yisrael during this Tkufa of expulsion of Golas, spiritual Golas. 24% of Nobel Prize winners are Jews. Less than 2% of the world. The Benishan gives us the opportunity in the Siberia to put on the old uniform. Just remind you people who you are, what your potential is. And so, the Tzduki says to Rabbi Yeshua, what kind of business what kind of obligations, connection do they have once the master is sent away the slave, once the husband is given a get to his wife? Yeshua says, Chosos, even after all of this, quotes the Posse from Yeshayahu, Oid Yodei Natuya, his hand is still there, over us, hovering above us. The Mashah says, but that's, that's Peronius. That's retribution. What kind of an answer is that? Natuya, Gematria is 70. The Shivam the Shainas, the Klayasal, is going to pick up her force and squeeze the nakudas of spirituality from those lashainas. I remember way at the beginning, Mamish, about 45 years ago. brought down 
a man who was a very dominant person in the secular Zionist establishment, the labor Zionist leader, who had a certain nostalgia about him, brought him down to Dor Samer. We were in the old building on the Chov Tidha. That in itself is a Tisha B'Av story, that there should be a street in Yerushalayim named after Tidha, who assassinated a Jew who was trying to reach out to the Arab community to create a different kind of a relationship. But that's another story. And this labor Zionist leader walked around the old base Merdish over there. And he broke down crying. He turned to me and he said, he was from Suvalk, he didn't pronounce Alamed very well. Brilliant guy, very, very brash and passionate in his ideas. He looked at me, he said, Reb Nota, wondim gemara ba'angwit, am yisal chai. And he cried. The Nitzitzis of Kedusha that had to be nifta. Oid yodu netuya. And the mechanism through which that is going to take place will at times be the Yisurim, the retribution of the Kiyom of the Teichacha. Again, a moment before, and as it's beginning, Lo Aleinu, an advocate, a defense attorney, on behalf of Klal Yisrael, but recognizing the hashkocha post facto and understanding the kasha that ha would have been asked had it not happened. Each individual why and how beyond our ken. Not too unlike the uncertainty principle where we can make gross predictions about a cell, but we can't predict the place, project each individual proton, neutron, the molecules, they, they seem to be random. Is there a Seder? Of course there's a Seder. Can I see the Seder? No. But on the gross level, I know that there's a Pausha called the Teichacha, twice in the Teichacha. And there's been a Kiyam of it. Choben by Esrishen, Choben by Esheni, the Inquisition. Tishabot. And as many historians point out, Girish Sword and World War II was left festering till it broke out from World War I. The make-believe solutions invited explosion. World War I 
Russia and Germany declared war on each other, which means that the Shoah, the most massive devastation and suffering of Kladyasov in modern times, began on Tisha B'Av. One of the strange things about matzah is that the matzah symbolizes avdus and cherus. Matzah is the lechem oini, the lechem that Klai ate in the state of avdus, takes longer to be digested, and that's what they were fed. It was cheaper and more practical for the Egyptian masters to feed them matzah. But matzah is because those speak of it say come. They, they had to get out quickly. There wasn't time. So it symbolizes <clears throat> matzah are morsels. Each bite of matzah is a morsel of paradox. It's a kezayas. Kosevis of edible paradox. We weren't, we didn't earn that privilege to exit. The Benishon plucks us out. We've spoken in the past here about the connection, why that minig the Ramor brings about the egg at the Seder table to, and fixing the date of Tisha B'Av the same night as the Seder is because built in the Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim was that we left prematurely. There are going to be other Golosim. And the analogy we like to use is that there are two companies that do well during the prosperous years, the years of Shefa. One does brilliantly, but has no game plan for the recession. One does very well, not as brilliantly, but has a game plan. I invest in the second company. We're told at the Seder, they're going to be a Tishabov because you didn't complete the Golas. And you had to be extricated now artificially, synthetically. The Rebbeinu had to pluck you out of spiritual bankruptcy. Chapter 11, for not having fulfilled the Aseles Hadibulis. But you're going to make it out of those Tisha Bows. And that's the Pesach Tisha B'av connection. Of course, there's much more to be said about that also. Chazonish would often say that a Jew has to learn to live <clears throat> with contradictions. Submitted as evidence that a Novi to be eligible for Nevoa for Ruach HaKadosh has to be besimcha, otherwise he's not a candidate for Ruach HaKadosh. That means that Yemiyoa Novi, who read, who wrote, authored, Eicha that we read this morning, Lamentations, had to be besimcha to be eligible for the Ruach HaKadosh to write Eicha. Stira! Yeah, Stira. Maybe that's why Lechem Oni, the Lechem which is based on the, the Stira, it's the bread of slavery and the bread of freedom. Again, some of us share the idea that this idea of the essential Stira in mankind is in the Machlekes, the Beis Yosef, and the Ramor, on the Broch of Ashi Yotza, 
Mafli Lasses. Awesome what the Rebbeinu Sholem has done and does and creates, created and creates. Beis Yosef learns it's the complexity, the intricacy, the magnificence of the human body in all its details. What an awesome creature. The Ramor learns it's the improbability of a goof and an ashama being housed in a single entity. Two realms of existence. Mafli lasses, the improbability of that being put together. So we're created in a state of contradiction, stira. We're born as a people in a state of stira. The individual, the nation, and we live throughout history defying all of the norms that govern other people. And so, Od Yoda Netuya, Rabbi Yeshua, is teaching us that in Golos, with the suffering, with the buffeting, with absorbing all those shocks and trauma, that is what's going to testify to our transcendence as a people. Yaakov Emden writes in his Siddha, and before him, the idea expressed in the Ebenezer and the Rabbeinu Bechai, that the very suffering of Klal Yisrael, the improbability of its continuing existence, actually in Chazal, how can this one sheep among 70 wolves yet continue. And it does. And we testify to it. But that doesn't mean that I can simplistically explain the mechanics of how that works. I only know that when we create communities where the energy of Teira is dominant, always be failings on the part in Tzadik Yechta. But when we measure ourselves and we measure our goals in terms of what the Rebbeinu Shalom wants of us, then we create communities, families, yechidim, that survive and transcend. But dealing with this Peronius, these Peronius at different junctures in history, Ramban says, Pentishkach, lest you forget what you've seen. Maimir Sinai, going to Ramban, you have to remember the manner in which Taylor was given at Sinai, the encounter at Sinai. One characteristic, one feature there was they saw the sounds. And so Atelier Shabal Peh will then have an existence as an integral part of Tehra, even when it's written down. Rabbi Nebuchai says that there was a nest from Avram till Sinai that even though it was passed down verbally, it had all of the accuracy, authenticity, as if it was written down. I think we can make the case that after Rebbe's Bezdin decides to write down Tehra Shabal Peh for all the reasons that we need a Tehra Shabal Peh, 
we have to have the advantage of not getting it dispersed further, because Rebbe took that decision based on threats and challenges, but not to pay the penalty that it stops being a Teru Shaval Peh. Nunes, Rehem as throughout history. Rehem Simcha says, by May Mariva, that Meisha Ben was supposed to talk to the seller in order to reinforce the necessity of Rehem as as a nest that would walk us through history. Had he spoken to the seller and it delivered the water, that would have been Rehem as I'll call upon him we today have a converse, Rayam as Akailas, that even though it's written down, it still remains Kailas. Okay. Pashas Rei, Rei and Nechi, Nesin, Lefnechem, as a brocha, as a clolo, as a brocha, Shet Tishmon. Medrash, Yelam Deinu Rabbeinu, on that Posik says, What's the aloha to make hafsakot intermissions in the reading of the tochecha? And the Medr says, no, because it says a posik, re'ei anoichi. Why does the Medr choose? In fact, I'm not sure if the, posik, if the Medr quotes the posik, but it does bring the, the shaila on this posik. Why over here? There are two ways to relate to the Peronius of Claudia Sol in history, the Kiyom. One, Shmiadik. That's sequentially. Or, Riyadik. Seeing you can see panoramically. You can see a lot of things simultaneously. Riyadik or Shmiyadik. Shmiyadik, then you take each event in isolation. You take Choben Bayes Rishon, Choben Bayes Sheni, Girish Svod, Chmeneki, World War I, the devastation that befell Kihilis in Europe. The Crusades, World War II, all of the suffering, each as a separate, isolated, discrete happening. That Shmiadik, that cannot impossible to, to handle. Or you take it Riyadik, panoramically. It begins with a Brisbane of Solomon. Avram chooses the lesser of the evils, better Golos than Gehenna. And therefore, in each place and time, the expiation, the atonement of the necessary quantity and quality of the Averis, only the Rebbe knows. But it's happening. Do I doubt for it not to take place in a devastating fashion? Of course. That's my job. That's what the Rebbe wants of me. But I also live with the irony and the paradox that that is what happens. Chazal bring a medrash, a if somebody will tell me how many years Jews served Abay the Zohar, then I'll tell you when the ghoul is going to be. So meter can I get meter. Oy the other in the two 
Re'ei Anochi. Why does the Medrash in Amdenu Rabbeinu ask this Shailah making up sokas in the in the Teichacha on Parshas Re'ei because Riyadik, if you take it a panoramic view, then everything that has transpired and is transpiring is part of the grand plan. There no half sockers. That would make it shmiadik. Riyadik means to see it in one fell swoop. And in fact, the Balaturim there on Parshas Re'e says, Re'e Anochi, Re'e Anochi, look at the Anochi of Anochi Hashem Lo Kecha, where we have the Ramban that it has to be in the same manner, revisiting Maimon HaSinai always has to be Pentishkach. And so, Another Tisha B'Av. The Mayor Simcha says that the Etzem morning, very similar to what the Chaim Veloshna says, that the Etzem morning is the building and the recreation of that third base Migdish which is imminent. Something that's totally gone and lost, you forget about, says Omer Simcha. We're still crying. It means that we're davening. We're caring. As the Rebbein Shalom cares, Kaviyocho, to give us whatever level of Yisurim are necessary to expiate the guilt, so we daven in the sense that it's imminent. Of course, if it was Mos, it was ki kotzafta, olein ma'od. It's temporary. It's going to pass. It's in process. It's in motion. When the Bala Torah Tmima asked that the Vim Rishainim were supposed to end in a positive note, so the Yushalmi already points out that the question from Yushayo is there, it's talking about, not talking about Am Yisrael. But even there, the meaning is that we repeat the positive posik. But the etzem uvda, that it's in the words of the Novi, Kimos, that the, if we have become despicable to the banish Lailam, it's only Kikotsafta Lenamahid. So inherent in those words is the that it's imminent. And the crime and the availus are not merely testimony to the past. They're proactive moments of reconnecting and rebuilding. The Rebbechaim Veloshim has said, on, asked on the Gemara, why does it say, call him a Sabala Yushraim, Zeicha, Baraya, in the present tense, Bisim Chosa, should say in the future tense, Yiske, Beyira, says, says Rebbechaim Veloshim, because now, just like Yaakov couldn't receive Tanchumim for Yosef because the Xerah's mess is Nishkach Minaleid, it means the idea is still alive. And that's what <coughs> Rameh Simcha is saying. 
נת בעצם, what Rabbi Yeshua answered the tzeduki, that oid yodo netuya, the Rebbe Nisham is still going to with us, still engaged, still dealing with us. That means that the relationship is still intact and that the very ness of our existence Rabbeinu Bechal, Yibn Ezra, and more recently Rabbi Yaakov Emden say is the ultimate statement and testimony of the Hashgocha, a few thousand years of having been disconnected from the land, coming back, the paradox of the growth of Teva, and yet the secularity of the mindset of the Weltanschauung, of the collective governing body, Stiras mentioned some time ago, and I'll end with this. About 50 years ago, near the Tachanam Malkazit, then a monument was put up to commemorate the martyrs of the Holocaust. They put on top, they carved into the, the stone obelisk, Nizko, we will remember. It was an uproar from the Ele Matera, and it said, they said, our tzibur screamed out, it's supposed to say Yizko, not Nizko. Big uproar. A Jew who was later to become Menahel of the Osamech Israeli Department, Rabavom Rabbit Zatzal, as a bocha, was sent by Reb Chatzkel Sano to erase the not sure how he was going to do it, but somehow get rid of the nun, turn it into a yacht. He was caught. On his resume, that was one of the prime reasons we took him. <laughs> Posik says, Noflo leisaisif kum sulas Yisrael. That's why there's no nun in Ashrei. Brings to mind that Posik. Bemarova in Eretz Yisrael, they said, no flow no Yisrael, not going to continue to fall. Kum Sulas Yisrael. Nevertheless, we don't have the nun represented. I somehow feel that that's the nun that flip-flopped and appears in the Sefer Teir upside down by the Hebrew Seyer Oren. It's a nun that stands on its head. It has to be righted. In El Yisrael, the they could be optimistic in their interpretation, somehow being here gives us, the Rebbe gives us a sense of optimism. And yet, there are those who abuse that optimism and write Nizko instead of Yizko. The Rebbe should give us the Kayach the sensitivity, the ability to 
digest the stunning Hashgocha. As Reb Tzadik says, the Kabbalah, the Meseris, amongst Gedei Lechsidis, that every Posik must have a potentially positive interpretation. Am Yisrael is Am, they say to the Rebbeinu on this land, to Meisha, it's a land that it consumes its inhabitants. Says so the Tzaddik, yes, it's true. It's the only hand that has an inherent relationship in the spiritual chemistry between its inhabitants and the place. This land digests its inhabitants. It's either going to ingest them or eject them. Ben Hashem Zahofna, we should be Zeicha, Bimheva, yet. Even in the moments within our reach, to be as a girl, Bimheva, Bimheva.